Hey, I'm Hunt, and this is Hunt on LSU, your channel for LSU Fighting Tiger football talk. Enjoy the video. We want you to leave a comment below, hit that like button, and subscribe right below the video. Enjoy. Glenn West, Go 24-7 senior writer, joins us every single Tuesday, does so now. Glenn, how are you? Doing all right, Hunt. Just wishing that we had gotten this weather the last couple of mornings that we've had, uh, you know, the previous <laughs> couple of weeks. Uh, it's actually been pretty pleasant outside when I've walked out in the mornings the last couple of days. I noticed that. I, uh, I I went out for a run this morning, and usually when I go out of my house, which is kept pretty cold, um, I go outside, and it's like a puff of hot air at, whenever I go out to run. And this morning, I walked out, and there there was none of that there. It was it was actually yeah. quite uh, quite nice, and so. Uh, yeah, none of that when we were out of practice either. So um, just you know, this is the kind of year, but we're getting closer to some football. Let's uh, let's talk about it. Um, let's start on the offense. We talked a lot about the defense. Let's start on the offense. And I haven't talked a ton about Garrett Nussmeyer, to be quite frank. What has your impression been of the uh, the Tiger quarterback? Yeah, I think he's been pretty strong overall. Uh, there's obviously a few days there at the very beginning where. Uh, he, he was making a couple of decisions he'd probably like to have back. But I think probably one of the answers that we got from him um, during his uh, media session last week was he talked about not wanting to have a perfect fall camp. You know, this is his first year as a starter, and he talked about wanting to having to go through some growing pains. And um, part of that is is making mistakes in, in fall camp and learning from them, re-repping them, uh, getting the opportunities to kind of see where maybe uh, he can and can't you know, throw a ball um, in, in certain coverages and in certain situations. So I think it's going to be a really big learning process for him here in year one. Um, yes, he has some experience in, in college, which I think should help him a little bit make that transition. Is But he's going to be a first-year full-time starter uh, you know, this year. And, and I think that will come with uh, with some mistakes and, you know, learning from them. And, and I, I think, you know, really these first – you know, three, four, five games before we get into the meat of conference play are going to be really important for him uh, to just kind of learn the speed of the game on a weekend, week out basis, learn, you know, kind of everything you need to know uh, before you kind of get into that SEC gauntlet that he's going to be facing this year. But I've been pretty impressed for the most part the last couple of weeks. I mean, he's made uh, some really great decisions down in the red zone and goal line drills that we've been able to see. Uh, you watch one on ones and seven on sevens. It really doesn't look like he has much problem or much issue with chemistry with his, uh, you know, his receiving weapons. I mean, those guys are, you know, really, you know, burning. Uh, I would say the, the the defensive backs in those drills, and I think a lot of that has to do with the timing that they've uh, been able to kind of accumulate here over the last couple of of, of months. I think everyone is kind of on the same page that Kyron Lacey will likely be the leading receiver on this team. And when you start looking at the second option, you got Chris Hilton, you got CJ Daniels, and you got Mason Taylor, the tight end. Who do you think is second on this team in catches? Yeah, I, I think it very well could be Mason Taylor. I mean, they they they, they do a lot of these check downs, a lot of these short routes, intermediate routes to Taylor that he's able to you know turn up for extra yards after the catch. And I think that's a a pretty underrated part of his game that we've seen at times flash. Um, but the problem is he's been behind you know, Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas the last couple of years. So I, I do think that there's going to be more targets and more opportunities for him, uh, you know, to catch the ball in the short part of the field and turn it up down the sidelines for big yards after the catch. We saw that uh, in the bowl game against Wisconsin. It's been a, a pretty common theme, I would say, throughout fall camp as well. Um, I'm, I'm excited to see what Mason Taylor looks like in this offense and, you know, just kind of how they fit in Kamorian Pimpton and trade as green around him as well. Uh, Cause I, I do think that there's not really a, a, uh, a, 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 a player here that, you know, defenses are going to actually scheme for here early in the season. I think you're going to have to scheme for everybody because uh, you don't have that Malik neighbors kind of guy that you can plan around for uh, opposing defenses. Uh, and I think that's going to give guys like Mason Taylor and, uh, and and Chris Hilton and C.J. Daniels and Kamorian Pimpton, uh, Xavion Thomas, uh, you know, all these guys' opportunities and looks that maybe, uh, you know, just in terms of how they want to spread this offense around. So I'm, I'm, I'm very excited, but I think probably Mason Taylor would be my answer there. I really do feel like he's he's poised for a big year this uh, in his junior season. You've seen more than I have. I've had to, had to get up here a couple times when they've been uh, been practicing or had meetings. Um, I have seen a fair amount for the portion I have of screens, both to the running backs and to the yep. wide receivers. Quickly, what do you make of that? Yeah, they've they've really leaned into that heavily with Josh Williams uh, at, at the running back spot. I mean, they they want him out on the perimeter, and I think the 
the easiest way to get Josh on the perimeter is by tossing him the ball in the backfield and letting him turn up field with a head of steam. Um, that that has been a very popular play. They've done you know the screen game with Lacey, with with Hilton, with uh, Aaron Anderson, with uh, really all their wideouts, and 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 I think that is absolutely going to be a huge part of what they want to do. Um, you know, short routes. You know, get the guys in space and let them turn up field and make the plays uh, after the catch. I think that's going to be a certainly a part of this. Um, you know, foundation piece of this offense you've also seen some you know jet sweeps and jet you know touch passes that have gone for touchdowns um you know from from guys that are just kind of in motion and already kind of have that full head of steam that they're able to turn up field for uh so i I do think that's going to be a big part of this offense um and i I do think you know on third downs in particular you know we we, brian kelly kind of told us last week but didn't tell us that they're going to have some specialty you know plays out there for third down some players out there for third down and in particular at the running back spot, I just really think that Josh Williams is going to be that guy that's in there on third down. I mean, they just love what he can do from a pass blocking perspective. He's somebody that you can check the ball down to and he can go up and get you some positive yards. Um, So I I do feel like, you know, when you get into kind of situational football as well, you're starting to see some of these things play out a little bit in fall camp. I know the print guy and you will want to get it right. I'm just asking you to guess here on this one because we're, we're doing a little radio here. What is your guess about Zy Alexander's availability next Sunday in Las Vegas? What can you expect to see from him? Um, because we've kind of seen him pretty limited in, in camp thus far. Yeah, I, w- I would probably say limited to maybe not even, you know, kind of out there. I mean, yeah. I, I there's, there's been a number of guys out there that have, that have gotten reps ahead of him. I, I don't think I've ta- I think really this Saturday was the last we was the first time we've seen him kind of uh, get some second team reps in there. Uh, he was out there, I believe, with um, with Jair Brown or with J.K. Johnson, one of the two um, at, at the outside corner spot on Saturday for a little bit. But he, I think he's still probably, you know, a couple weeks out from maybe being his peak self in terms of physical form. I and mean, we've, we've seen him out there and he's just he still looks like there's some hesitancy there on that knee and just not quite 100 percent you know, in terms of just being able to push off of it and all that stuff that he needs to do as a defensive back. Um, so, you no, know, I would say probably P.J. Woodland, J.K. Johnson, Jair Brown. Ashton Stamp, Sage Ryan, those are kind of the the names that I think you'll see out there uh, against USC in the first game at corner. All right, this time next week, we'll be talking LSU-USC, so we'll get to that when we get to it. I guess we can talk some big picture now. I mean, what do you make of this team? Do you think they're a playoff contender at 10-2? and two? Can they compete to win the SEC? Are they a team that has more concerns than you had a month ago? I mean, big picture, what do you what do you think after watching three weeks of practice? Yeah, I would say that, you know, after watching three weeks, you, you can't help but, you know, have a little bit better feeling about this defense. I mean, we've seen them out there. They've been more physical. They've been more, uh, you know, aggressive, especially in the front seven. I think that's probably been my biggest takeaway is that I do think this front seven is going to be able to, you know, get after quarterbacks, get in the backfield a little bit more consistently than they did last year and and make those quarterbacks a little bit more pressured uh, in some of their throws. And, and that could maybe be a way that this defense has some success. Um, and you know, what have we said really going back to the spring? It's how much can this defense improve, uh, to really kind of help LSU, LSU's chances of, of having a better season this year. And I think a big reason why LSU was obviously nine and three last year was, uh, because of their defense and, and because of the, the struggles they had there. If you can get this group from outside of the top 100 into the top you know, 70, 60 in the country. Does that get you into that 10 and two range where you're competing for a playoff spot? Um, I think you have a lot better shot if you're in that kind of 60 to 70 range as a defense. Um, and, and and maybe I'm lowballing LSU there. Maybe they do come out and they're a little bit better than, than maybe even we think right now. So um, I, I do think that LSU is going to have a shot here at the playoff. I'm still kind of in that nine and three camp. Um, I'm not sure I can get to 10 and two yet uh, based off of what I've seen, because I do think that while you're expecting some incremental improvement with the defense, you're also probably not expecting the offense to be number one in the country by, you know, a wide margin again next year. So just kind of how those two kind of level off is going to be kind of the the the, the sense that you get. But um, I, I do think this USC game is going to be a great indicator of uh, really where LSU is on both sides of the ball and, and just kind of if they're if they're legit or not uh, as a playoff contender this year. How do you feel about the run defense? Not that you've seen a ton of it, but. 
Yeah, I mean, they, they've been okay. I, I would say when you get down to the red zone and goal line situations, the offense has had some 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 wins down there. But, you know, I've been very impressed with Jacoby and Guillory. I think he's run fit extremely well. The linebackers, Harold Perkins and, and Greg Penn, I think have, have both done a nice job with those inside runs as well. Um, you know, they, they've had some busts. I mean, Caleb Jackson's bust open a couple of runs for, for, for LSU this year, or I should say this fall. Um, you know, Josh Williams has had a couple of big runs as well, but I, I will say, I think that the, the run defense has been a little bit better than maybe I thought, you know, kind of going in. Um, we'll see if it holds up against another opponent, but, you know, just from what I've seen so far, I would say it's, it's been okay. And it, it's not going to be a, uh, at least from what we've seen in fall camp, it's going to, I don't believe it to be a huge, huge weakness or deficiency right now based off of how these guys are performing. I know you and Sonny are all over recruiting over there at Go 24-7. What can you say about the last you know, three, four weeks for Brian Kelly's staff on the recruiting trail? Yeah, it's been great. They're knocking on the door now, the number two recruiting class in the country on our service. I know really across the board they're in that kind of top three range. Uh, they've, they've, you know, attacked positions of need. I think Corey Raymond is is shutting a lot of people up right now. He's, <laughs> he's done a really nice job over the summer of getting some uh, really good defensive backs in here. You've got another one, Aiden Anding, that's committing uh, later in the week this week. And uh, you've got, you know, a couple of five stars out there committing at the end of the month and Jonah Williams and, and Jamie French. So uh, LSU is still, still, you know, chugging along on that side of things are at 24 commits right now. Uh, and I think there's still a, a lot of room to improve and grow in this class in, in, as we move forward. Glenn, we appreciate some time. We'll see you out there on, uh, on Saturday and we will uh, talk next week on game week. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Hunt. Glenn West, senior writer, go 24 seven. Always appreciate his time on Tuesdays looking for LSU football content Hunt on LSU on YouTube. You can find all of our LSU content right there each and every day. Hey, thanks for watching Hunt on LSU. Before you get out of here, do us a couple of favors. Hit that like button, leave your comments below, and subscribe to the channel for all your fighting Tiger football talk. See you next time.